ओलिक्स नेटवर्क एटीन मिशन पोषण भविष्य रोशन Welcome back. We have put a lot of fundamental cues on the table, whether it is Trump's tariffs, Italian turmoil, Indian bipoles, GDP numbers, Air India bombing, uh, well, uh, the offer uh, 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 bombing, so to speak, uh, a lot of fundamental cues. But let's see how the markets are going to digest all this. We have our technical experts joining us, Ashwini Gujarat, Prakash Kapa and Rohil, Rahul Mohinder with us. Good morning to all of you, gentlemen. Ashwini, uh, let me start with you. Uh, well, the Nifty had a roaring rally yesterday, especially in the last half hour or last one hour. How much of this is just FNO pressures and what's the trade today? Well, good morning. It was a nice engineered rally. Okay. So, you see, the market has to move together. You can't have a two is to one decline to advancers and, you know, just HDFC Bank uh, taking everything up. That way, you know, the opportunity is not on the long side which does not mean the market cannot go up but the risk reward is unfavorable from an intraday perspective to get long after uh, you know 700 point uh, up up move mm. so that way uh, the opportunity will come if there is no follow through on the upside and slowly the market slides uh, below 10700 and possibly on the bank nifty we start getting below uh, you know yesterday's close of about 26950 thereabouts uh, we have to see, you know, how uh, this 10,700, 900 plays out because uh, yesterday's rally basically was, uh, you know, F and O along with some, you know, technical news. As far as, uh, you know, stocks are concerned, uh, it's more of an individual uh, stock day. And even there, just the large caps uh, yesterday participated. If you look at a cluster of mid caps, there was uh, very little participation. So that model will continue where 30, 35 stocks keep attracting money and the rest of them kind of languish. Okay, well, uh, Prakash Gaba and Rahul Mohan. I was just going to ask you, Ashwini, the cell is uh, uh, with what kind of an opening? See, the cell is if the market cannot show any follow through on the upside and slowly starts sliding below yesterday's uh, close broadly on both the indices. Okay. Uh, well, we'll come to you for individual stocks as well and on the Bank Nifty. But before that, Prakash Gaba and Rahul Mohinder are also with us. Let's welcome them. Uh, Prakash, hi. Good morning. This week has not been too bad. 1.5% rally this week and 10,700 has been conquered. You get a sense that so we could be moving northwards from here? Good morning, Sonia. Looks like 10,740 was a logical target. It's achieved that. Mm -hmm. But it is not closed about it. Uh, the, yesterday was a HDFC led bank rally. Bank futures made a new high. Nifty futures did not. There's a, there is some problem out there. I Nifty, there is, I don't see much trend there. Only thing is I'm looking to short. So far, it looks okay. If it starts to trade about 10,743 and closes about it, then maybe we'll see around 10,857 in the days to come. But I would like to short it. Where to short it is the issue. If it opens the gap up and perhaps goes up, perhaps it gets stretched more. It sets up for a shorting opportunity. Or if it breaks down 10,700 zones, that again could be a shorting opportunity there as well. So I don't know how to play this. Depends where it opens. Best is to play stock specifics. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, well, uh, Rahul Mohinder is also with us. Good morning, Rahul. Uh, what is the nifty trade today or a positional one? Uh, I think, first of all, that's a 10,780, very key level. We're kind of knocking on that. Uh, I think what remains to be seen for me is, can we really steadily stay above that 10,780 or 10,800 if I had to round it up? And, you know, should that happen, if the question is, where's the next 200 to 250 points, it's up. But I need that confirmation, getting through that 10,800 odd kind of marker. I think the market's really in uh, a range where we've got two very important levels. One at the low point of 10,540, which I'm going to use as a trigger to uh, look at some short-term weakness if that breaks. But as of now, I must admit, we haven't broken any key averages. We're well above that 200 day. We're kind of taking support on that. We're above, uh, you know, most uh, uh, key averages for that matter. So trend-wise, the Nifty does look sideways to positive to me. There's no reason long-term we should conclude any kind of a breakdown or even medium-term. So 10,540, 
unless that's broken, I think everything is good. Keep watching for that 11,050 to 11,100 target. Okay. You're a ray of sunshine, I must say. <laughs> All right, uh, so 11,000, uh, we've not heard that level in a while, right? <laughs> and now we're hearing it from a lot of our experts. But Ashwini, before I ask you about individual stocks, I wanted your thoughts on how to approach ICICI Bank now from a uh, from an investor standpoint. News this morning that, you know, the board has asked her to go on an indefinite leave till the inquiry, etc. Would you read this as a positive, considering that now maybe the cleanup is happening? Well, if they had done this earlier, Bank Nifty would have made a new high. Yeah. But uh, now that they have done it, possibly, you know, uh, ICICI Bank could do a bit of a catch-up, maybe 10, 12 uh, point rally. But uh, overall, uh, it should be positive for ICICI Bank and the 260 low uh, now becomes firmly in place. So that way, you know, this sort of news flow uh, could propel ICICI Bank higher, uh, while the ones that went up yesterday uh, could, could move sideways. Okay. All right, uh, let's wait and see uh, whether the market takes this as uh, a clean-up and therefore better times or whether it is more worried about the intervening uh, confusion or lack of leadership. Uh, well, uh, the Bank Nifty itself, uh, Ashwini? See, Bank Nifty, you know, if you're talking longer term, it looks like the strongest index, etc. But this year, you know, extrapolation should be avoided because you have so much going on the moment we start getting to higher levels something tends to take the market lower so this is not your trending market at say you know uh, 25 500 26 uh, thousand uh, you know you can be positive but uh, the upside could be limited if you get overexcited at 27000 then maybe you know higher levels uh, increasingly become difficult so that is the only problem otherwise it is outperforming. There's no doubt about that. Okay. Yeah. Can we come to the stocks? Uh, what stocks are you playing today, Ashwini? See, Bharat Forge is a sell with a stop of uh, 660, target of 635. While uh, large stocks uh, went up yesterday, uh, these sort of stocks came off. Now, HDFC Bank, 5% yesterday. In case we are able to, again, stay in the positive for HDFC Bank, that's fine. But if it starts to move into yesterday's range, then maybe uh, a bit of profit booking can happen here because the way it uh, moved up, uh, you know, in the last hour, that often is unsustainable and uh, in a new expiry, sometimes, uh, you know, there is some uh, profit booking. But wait for yesterday's close to get taken out on downside. IRB is a sell with a stop of 235, target of 220. HUL is a buy with a stop of 1595, target of 1635. And uh, Tech Mahindra is a buy with a stop of 700, target of 735. Okay, well, uh, let me also go across to uh, Prakash Gaba now. Prakash Gaba, uh, your, in your stock list, I notice you do have a lot of large cap names, ACC, HUL, etc. But uh, there's a sell on HUL that you have this morning. No, in fact, HUL is a buy. Right. Maybe I made a mistake. Okay. I think it's a buy out here. I have a buy on, I'll start with ACC, it looks like a good base formation, can climb to around 1400 zone, stop below 1330. I have a buy on HUL. Maybe I made a mistake by sending it. Possible target on the upside is 1650. Stop below 1600 should be fine. Last Trend to Pro Infotech also looks good. Seen a good up move for a couple of days. Sideways consolidation and up move is resumed. Possible target on the upside is 1780 to 1800 zones. Stop below 1710. And there's a solitary sell on Bharat Electricals. That looks weak. I think it's coming down to levels close to 110. Stop about 117. It, it is a buy actually. It's a, it was my yeah. mistake actually in reading it. But you have a target of 1650, right? On each yeah, year. Okay, okay. Uh, Rahul, uh, uh, first your bank nifty trade and what other individual stocks? Uh, needless to mention, considering my positive view on the nifty, you know, as I mentioned, yes, the only caveat being 10800 on that. The bank nifty too is no exception. But again, uh, given a choice, I think what's going to rally is probably stocks like Axis Bank. Uh, HDFC, the risk reward is against you, but trend-wise, very positive. So even now, I still think one should continue to uh, patiently hold the bank nifty. If you're looking at, uh, you know, levels for the day, 27,350, a uh, very important level on the upside. So we may see some resistance if we have a bit of a rally up around that marker. But uh, I think continue to hold on to it. There's no worries unless 26,200 really breaks down from a medium to long-term trend perspective. So uh, 
uh, continue to be positive on that. Okay, well, uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, your uh, individual picks? Okay, let's start with the first one. Bata uh, India is my first pick. And the reason I'm looking at this is around 760 to 775. We see a huge block of volume, stock well above key averages. Most of the indicators pointing up. I still think we can rally to newer highs of 850. I keep a stop loss at 740. Uh, this is a short to medium term kind of call. The next one would be Yes Bank. Uh, 365 would be my initial target on Yes Bank. Thereafter, I see it moving to about 378. I think one can even buy the current levels with a stop loss of 335. And finally, a medium to long term call. ITC attracts me at these levels with a stop loss of 264 for targets of 288. But I'd like to mention if you look at the overall picture on ITC, we've really been range bound between roughly 250 uh, to about 290 since uh, the last 10 odd months. So it's a very big range, long time of consolidation. I don't know we, if we can time the breakout of this range, but I think if one steadily accumulates on declines, the stocks well above the 200 day moving average on the dailies and the weeklies, indicators point to a lot of positive. So I think at these supports, one should slowly and steadily accumulate for that medium to long term. Okay, uh, it's interesting. None of you have any auto stocks on your list. Uh, generally, I had, except uh, Ashwini, who has a sell call on Bharat Forge. But generally, ahead of the auto sales numbers, you know, a lot of these stocks rally. Um, Rahul, would you want to trade any auto names this morning? I think the strongest amongst these is going to be MM for me. I still think it'll trot forward uh, positively. So I think, but the only problem with MM is I think there's a limited upside. So probably you might see four or five percent up in the near term. Uh, you know, and then there's the other gamut where we've got stocks like Tata Motors, which have been languishing for a long, long time. So, you know, yesterday I was looking at uh, Tata Motors and I can see that, yes, between 260 and 280, potentially very good support for the stock. It's a beaten down stock. But the point is, there's no uh, there's no buy signal yet. There's no breakout triggers even on the short term, breakout triggers even on the short term. Other than kind of approaching attractive long term supports, there's no real signal. So I would patiently wait it out, get some more clarity. But definitely I'd like to point out maybe Tata Motors is not a stock to sell or think of shorting in the near term. It's probably time when uh, rotates into an accumulation. Okay, well, uh, good for that. Accumulation mode on Tata Motors. Well, let's quickly get some FNO strategies. Well, first day of the uh, June uh, uh, contract, Amit Gupta joins us from ICSI Direct. Uh, good morning, Amit. Which stocks are you trading today? Yeah, good morning. See, uh, first of all, from the technology pack, Infosys call options we are buying for the June series. We have recommended 1240 call option, which is available near 16, 18 rupees. And if you look at the implied volatility, so that is also pretty lower actually in Infosys right now. The reason being the stock had remained subdued below 1200 for the last three, four months now. In the month of Jan, when the actual FI buying came in technology pack, so that time Infosys was near, you know, 1200, but TCS has moved up by more than 10%. So there may be catch up exercise now in Infosys. 1200 call writers were very active. That positions we have already started seeing closer that happened in May. That I started seeing in June also because almost 15% of short closer was there in 1240 call strike in yesterday's session. So I think if somebody can buy at such low walls, then it is possible that this call option can give you good money and it can move towards you know 34 or 35 levels in the coming days. So that is one call option buying we have recommended. Second, from the consumption theme, because that theme is still you know buzzing, uh, I think Godrej Consumer and Dabur. So these two picks are there, which I think have consolidated for a pretty longer period, particularly Godrej Consumer. The last July 2017, the level was 1080. So it has you know slowly coming out of that range and whatever shots were added in the last three series almost 73 percent of addition was there because the stock has remained resilient in current series almost you know 20 percent of closer we have seen in the stock and that is why it has moved towards 1140 or 1145 levels my sense is it is coming out of this range we should be the buyer in this it can move towards 1250 in the coming weeks so that is one stock the other is tower as i said i think it is going to move over 400 now, Dabur from 2015, the last three years, breakout was 320. It almost tested in the recent fall and then it reverted back 
to 2018 high previously was 370 so it has been holding above this in the last one month my sense is it is moving above 400 now and whatever you know uh, short rollovers have been there in the stock they are going to see the closer now and that may be the major trigger on the higher side so this is another one from the consumption theme that we are recommending to our clients Okay, all right, uh, Amit, thanks a lot for joining us and giving us all those stocks. So let's do one thing, let's drill it down to the fundamentals. We'll take a break on the other side. Gautam Duggar of Motilal Oswal Securities. Hi guys, welcome back. Well, uh, we're going to now invite Gautam Duggar, the Head of Research Institutional Equities at Motilal Oswal Securities, to talk about earnings and individual stocks as well. Uh, Gautam, hi, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us. There are lots of stocks in focus, so I want to just discuss some of them with you. You know, this morning there's news reports indicating that uh, Chanda Kochar has been asked to go on an indefinite leave. Uh, for uh, ICICI Bank investors, how do you approach this? Because a lot of experts indicate that as this cleanup takes place, um, of course, should have been done earlier but now that this is happening it's actually positive for shareholders in the longer run how would you approach it we've liked the stock for some time now we think that uh, most of the issues on the asset quality are bottoming out now and valuations are at around 1.1 1.2 times uh, on a core book so obviously the risk reward is quite favorable at this stage clearly there can be some volatility on the stock for a couple of more quarters till this entire uh, news flow subsides and also they have an opportunity to you know keep divesting some of the stake in their subsidiaries so overall from a risk return uh, perspective the stock is quite favorably poised notwithstanding the fact that you can have a couple of quarters of significant volatility driven by news flow okay well uh, just to put it on record uh, to the sebi uh, to the exchanges they have only uh, uh, disclosed the fact that uh, there is an inquiry committee this is a mint report and we are still awaiting confirmation from the bank and I would assume since it's such an important uh, uh, decision mm -hmm. the exchanges will have to be informed uh, I'm, I'm just leaving that on the table I've, I've been looking for looking at the BSE uh, uh, announcements uh, since morning but at the moment uh, no announcement has been made nor have we got any confirmation to our question okay uh, well Gautam uh, that said uh, how, how are you approaching uh, the markets itself from now on we, we are seeing this big divergence with good stocks doing very well or rather the uh, uh, heavyweights doing very well and the mid caps in severe pain do you think this is going to continue for some time I mean does the nifty reach out to 11,000 even as the mid caps continue to show pain in fact uh, we've been pointing out the big divergence between valuations of mid caps and large cap for last 18 months now the valuation of mid caps to the large cap had reached an unsustainable premium and therefore it's uh, it's quite good that that valuation is now correcting it was long overdue and it's finally happening as regards the uh, broader market i think we are in a situation if, if i were to draw an analogy from cricket where we have to survive on this pitch for a couple of quarters because the things as far as macro front are concerned have deteriorated to an extent whether it is CAD or whether it is crude oil prices and therefore the consequent impact on inflation so it's better right now to spend time surviving on this pitch rather than looking to hit the ball out of the park and that basically means that you have to be uh, in high quality names high quality sectors sectors which have done well continue to do well because they're reporting strong earnings growth even for the quarter gone by if you look at sectors which have done well you have the same usual set of companies and the same usual set of sectors be it auto be it consumer discretionary consumer staples select set of private banks and NBFCs and obviously the IT names which have been doing well so so the approach has to be that one shouldn't be too adventurous in this market continue to favor large cap over the mid caps and we have uh, very concentrated uh, you know uh, choices as far as sectors are concerned so out of the 15 16 sectors that we cover we have a disproportionate power positive view on the five sectors that I mentioned and and very selective approach to rest of the 10 11 sectors which are largely in the cyclical and commodity domains so so I think I would not expect a very significant upside at the broader market level from the next five six uh, months view, viewpoint because you also have the political uncertainty to contend with given that uh, again uh, given by the results that came in uh, yesterday's uh, by poll so so the political uncertainty part of the equation is continuing to look a bit scary at this stage while the elections are still 12 months away and you can never predict elections especially in India that two 12 months in advance but clearly pays to be a little more cautious as far as valuations are concerned okay well you know I was just going through your note and within that you say that uh, cement is a space that has surprised you this quarter in terms of earnings 
uh, tell us exactly which are the stocks that you like and uh, would you expect this um, good quarter to continue in the next few because you know there are pressures in terms of higher costs etc yeah so the approach there has to begin very selective last quarter was very bad for cement and this quarter has been pretty good because we were surprised on the way they managed to control the cost while volume growth has been largely in line with the expectations the surprise came from the cost element and then actually that played through the pnl what we like there again is some of the large caps like shri cement and ultratech where obviously valuations are at a significant premium to the mid cap space but but what has also happened over there is the large players are consolidating their market share and therefore below a bit or i item you will continue to see that the cost pressures will continue to emanate whether it is depreciation or interest cost but uh, the, i i think that it is one of the relatively more cleaner sectors to play the cyclical uh, upswing if at all there is any and uh, obviously i would rather play cement than play the capital goods or deep cyclicals in construction or other spaces so from that we point within the cyclicals you can say that the the relative preference is with cement but from us uh, from the quarter specifically for this uh, fourth quarter f it the numbers were far better than what we expected uh, as far as the bottom line is concerned in fact cement has been one of the big surprising uh, sectors as far as numbers are concerned apart from consumer of course okay uh, uh, consumer just a, a little more you know where you have good earnings like say a jyoti labs parag mill prabhat dairy you have uh, valuations which are weak but then they are mid cap stocks uh, valuations which are attractive but uh, where you have very very uh, um, a, a huge discomfort on valuations uh, the huls uh, and the page industries uh, you know that's where uh, are the defensive pitch according to you so where would you tilt would you go towards the jyoti labs and the uh, dairy ca companies or do you tilt towards uh, the huls and uh, 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 you know the page industries so our uh, approach has been to stay with companies which have consistently delivered earnings now the other names that you mentioned in medcaps there has been a significant volatility even within the consumer sector as far as earnings growth is concerned but uh, if you look at names like page britannia pedilite hindustan lever titan those are the companies where we would like to focus our attention on so while valuations are expensive they've been expensive one year back as well three year back as well at maybe five year back as well and they will continue to remain expensive as long as the rest of the market doesn't deliver growth so while uh, it will be tough to justify valuations from a 6 months 12 months perspective but given that you are seeing an upswing in consumption now especially on the rural side after three consecutive years of normal monsoon government in an election mode obviously will try to indulge more on rural consumption and drive spending there so obviously you will not see material derating i would think uh, in consumption but you can have time correction in some of these names from the next 6 9 months perspective if you have a view of more than one year three year obviously these are the stocks where you want to play we've been having preference for lever or itc for last two years and that has worked quite well we continue to like pedilite we continue to like titan even now we think that there is a significant money still to be made in some of these names given that you have now started seeing some benefits in some sectors of consumer sector uh, from the unorganized to organized transition post the gst sectors like jewelry sectors like adhesives you are already seeing that happening and and as uh, ebay bill implementation happens and things stabilize further you will continue to see those movements of market share uh, you know sipping through so while if one is focused on one year forward p obviously this stocks don't make sense but clearly from a longer term wealth creation perspective these are the stocks one would uh, have to be in okay okay all right uh, gautam thanks for discussing all of these stocks with us uh, we will uh, touch base with you once again but for now we need to take a short break on the other side mr tulsin will also be with us to tell us how to approach the markets individual stocks and some pre opening rates kicking in